everyone, it's Catherine with Ready, Set, ABA, and today we're going to be talking about the difference between stimulus and response generalization. So first of all, we want to talk about the term generalization. We know that generalization is so important when teaching new skills and understanding concepts. We want to be able to learn from a variety of different people in a variety of different settings, and then understand lots of different examples of different items or being able to respond in multiple settings to different types of vocalizations or demands or social cues. So with stimulus, when we hear the word stimuli, we know that it's anything in the environment around us. Uh, when we have the discriminative stimulus or the SD, that's a specific stimuli that we have learned how to respond to. So for example, a green light. The first time we ever see a green light, it doesn't mean anything to us, but we eventually discriminate the difference between a green and a red light, and we know to respond in a certain way. We know to go versus we also learn that red means stop, and so we respond a certain way. But before that, we have all these stimuli in the environment, and a lot of times we want to be able to generalize that, okay, all of these green lights or green signals, whether it's a horizontal traffic light or a vertical traffic light, uh, those all mean go or with red stop signs, we know that those signal stop as well, just like a red traffic light. Um, another example that I wanna to use today is greetings, okay? So this one you may have heard of before. With stimuli, if we have a variety of different stimuli, somebody can say hi, they can wave, they can say what's up. No matter what they say, you know that it means that they're greeting you and you may respond in one way. So you have all of these different stimuli and you say, hello. So no matter what you're presented with, you know that these all mean the same thing. They're part of a stimulus class. Okay, so you could respond in a variety of different ways, but for the purposes of this, if we say, what are these example of on the left-hand side? Saying hi, waving, or what's up? They are a stimulus class. And if we understand that they all mean the same thing, we have generalized these stimuli. So on the other side, with response generalization, this is where we're really focusing on how we're responding. So when you're presented with a stimulus, there are many different ways that you can respond. So if someone says hi, there are many different ways that you can respond. You can wave, you can say what's up, you can say hello, and many more. These are all the different responses that you have generalized to mean the same thing. Now let's look at one more example. When you look at a behavior like opening, so let's say for opening, since these behaviors can actually look different depending on what you are opening. Open a bag of chips. So if someone says open it or you need something opened, opening a bag of chips is going to look different than opening a door or opening a box. So the topography or the form of these opening are different, but they mean the same thing. So you could say that these are still part of a response class. And we have generalized that there's many different ways to open things, but it equals the same thing. So when you see many different responses, so when you see many different responses over here, that's going to be response generalization. And when you see many stimuli over here, that's going to be many different stimuli that are generalized. Okay, so I hope this helps. And if you have any questions, you can comment below, or if there's any other topics that you wanna see, feel free to comment, subscribe for weekly videos, and follow us on Instagram for more.